pest and disease control. The most serious disease affecting cocoa in Trinidad and Tobago is the black pod disease. It is a fungal disease which affects cocoa pods at all stages of development. It attacks and kills the pod. This disease can reduce cocoa yields by over 40%. The black pod disease, as the name suggests, starts from small brownish black lesions on the outside of the pod. As these lesions grow larger, the fungus produce white bands of spores. In two weeks, the beans are infected by the fungus which causes rotting and must not be used. The entire thing now is covered with the disease and you also have the, um, what would be transmitted and dispersed all over the field to produce new infections. Now, in, in the situation with this pod, we will open it to see what, what is happening inside. In this case here, the, um, the disease would have, um, would have infected the entire wall of the pod, the shell, and it, 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 it is now affecting the beans inside. So when you look at the beans, really, you would see all the pulp itself would have changed appearance from, from being white, going to brown, which is really a next stage of the infection. Disease pods need to be removed from trees, otherwise they will contaminate other pods. The spores that are produced in huge numbers are spread by rain, wind, insects, rodents and birds. Spores that come into contact with new pods or other parts of the cocoa tree under suitable conditions, that is enough moisture and adequate temperatures, will result in new infections. Spores from disease pods that fall to the ground remain dormant over long dry periods. When the soil gets wet during rainy periods, these spores germinate in the soil. The impact of falling raindrops sends spores onto the lower parts of the cocoa tree trunks or into the air where they are dispersed by wind onto trees causing new infections. The black pod disease thrives and infects cocoa plants more easily under warm temperatures wet soil and highly humid air. Some good agricultural practices which will reduce the incidence of black pod disease are reduce the height of tall and overgrown trees to 10 to 12 feet by pruning. Open the canopy as much as possible to let sunlight and air in which lowers the humidity. Dig drains where needed especially in heavy soils for proper drainage. Lower overhead shade to approximately 30 to 35 percent. Apply manures or fertilizers to keep trees healthy. Keep weeds under control. Plant cocoa tree varieties which are more tolerant to the black pod disease, such as the Trinidad Selected Hybrid or TSH varieties. Harvest pods as regularly as possible, making sure to remove and destroy infected ones. Remove disease pods from trees weekly and destroy them. Apply copper fungicide sprays using a mist blower. In addition to black pod disease, which is broom disease, also results in loss of pods, although to a lesser extent. The Trinidad Select hybrid varieties show very good tolerance to this disease compared to older unimproved varieties. The symptoms of which is broom disease can easily be seen from the abnormal growth of twigs that form the classical vegetative brooms associated with this disease. However, symptoms on the pod can be misleading when compared to black pod, as they both have external lesions which almost look alike. The witch's broom disease also caused by a fungus, and it is very important to distinguish between witch's broom disease and black pod disease. So here we have examples of the symptoms produced by the witch's broom disease. This is early symptom development while this is much more advanced symptom development here. The, the symptoms classically would be the, um, the formation of a very hard, very hard lesion to the touch really. You would have a yellow type halo around the lesion. The lesion itself would be darker in color, more tending to, to, the, um, to be black in color on the, on the pod surface. With black pod, you're going to have the, um, the lesion sporulating into that white mass on the, um, on the surface of it. With which is boom, you do not get that, that um, the development of the white spores on the lesion. Unlike black pod disease, 
A fishy smell is not present with witch's broom, nor do the lesions break into the white band of spores. All the beans are converted to this really dark, um, clumped mass here. In fact, it becomes extremely difficult, almost impossible to separate the beans inside the infected pod of, um, of the witch's broom disease um, infection. One of the major differences between, between the witch's broom disease and the black pod disease is that in the black pod disease, the beans, when they are infected inside, they, they can still be, be separated, separated between each other. They can still be easily removed. However, in terms of the witch's broom disease, the entire bean mass is all clumped, gets very hard and cannot be separated. Remember, black pod disease can result in severe losses. The disease thrives under damp and humid conditions. Remove infected cocoa pods from trees and out of the cocoa field. Practice good field sanitation. Learn to tell the difference between black pod and witch's broom diseases. Observe young trees for symptoms of cocoa beetle damage. The cocoa beetle. In cocoa, the most prevalent insect pest problem is caused by the cocoa beetle, Starostoma brevi. The adult scrapes the bark of young branches and twigs, while the larval stage can girdle the trunk of young trees, resulting in death. This pest can be controlled by growing young cocoa trees in adequate shade, with good field sanitation, weed control, and the use of a recommended systemic insecticide containing cyclometrin. You can contact your area extension officer for further information on insecticide use.